Robbie, what's on your radar? Well, on March 16th, Washington, D.C., as everyone knows, became one of the very last major metropolitan areas in the country to finally end mass mandates for students. According to Mayor Muriel Bowser, kids who attend D.C. public schools no longer have to wear masks. That's not always evident, of course. Earlier this week, Vice President Kamala Harris visited Thomas Elementary School. You can see her there. It's a public school, and she posed for photos with kids. Every single kid in that photo op is wearing a mask. Harris is not. I don't know why these politicians keep doing these photo ops where they look foolish, unmasked, as the kids who are not particularly at risk from coronavirus all masked. Anyway, Thomas Elementary did not respond to my request for clarification about their masking policies, so it's not clear to me if the school actually requires masks or if the kids were just wearing them voluntarily or if they were told to put them on for the photo. In any case, the school would ha hardly be alone in keeping a mask mandate in place if it does still have a mask mandate because, in fact, many of the city's public schools, many of their public charter schools, which are overseen by a school board that is separate from D.C. public schools, they have kept mask mandates in place. Indeed, several have no plans to ever end the mandate, which is a source of tremendous frustration for some parents I spoke with. Our principal told us that right now, masks are still required indoors for all students, says Lindsay Elman, a mother of a child at Mundo Verde Bilingual Public Charter School. Mundo Verde is one of five D.C. area foreign language immersion charter schools that run from kindergarten through fifth grade, and they act as feeder schools for District of Columbia International School, DCI, which teaches sixth through twelfth grade. And they are, by and large, keeping mask mandates in place, even though they don't have to. DCI itself, for instance, is sticking with an indoor mask mandate. Students only gained the right to go maskless outdoors as recently as March 28th. That was last week. They wore them during sports. Outdoor track was masked, says Lauren Peterson, a mother with three kids whom I spoke with. She has twin 7th graders and a 10th grader at DCI. Her fourth and youngest child attended school at Elsie Whitlow Stokes, which is another one of these, these charters that feed into DCI. Peterson pulled the kid due to uncertainty about the mask mandates ever going away for good. Yu Ying Charter School, which is a Chinese-English dual language charter, is waiting until April 25th to end the mask mandate. Yu Ying is also enforcing a travel quarantine. Unvaccinated students, which is a category that includes virtually all the pre-K students, and their immediate family members are forbidden from leaving the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia tri-state area. If they do leave, they must abide by a 7 to 10 day quarantine period. The fact that these policies are far, far stricter than what the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend is not lost on families with kids in these schools. Quote, parents are not really allowed in the building for any reason, says Paul Fraioli, a parent. Up until a month ago, they wanted to have the objects people touched sanitized. The parents I spoke with for this article all expressed frustration with school administrators who had pledged to do exactly what CDC guidance and the scientific consensus believed was right. But aban they abandoned this course of action once health experts conceded that demasking was safe enough. For the past two plus years, we followed the science like it's the Bible. And now people's irrational fears are taking over these policy decisions, says Elman, the DCI parent. Freoli, the Yu Ying parent, pointed out that the CDC is moving away from raw case numbers as the relevant COVID-19 metric. What really matters to federal health officials is the hospitalization rate. But Yu Ying is focused on community spread, case counts, to determine its COVID policies. The school's health and safety plan notes that even the outdoor mask mandate will be brought back if the community spread level increases from low to medium. The plan also includes outdated recommendations that unnecessarily warn students and staff to avoid touching their masks and to wash their hands if they do. Be careful when taking off their mask and wash their hands after removing it. The plan reads, store the mask out of anyone's reach. Use a clean mask if someone touches the one you're currently wearing. So Yu Ying declined to offer clarification for this article, and none of the other schools responded to my request for comment at all. Frioli, Elman, and Peterson, the parents I talked to, said the strict policies largely reflect the preferences of the staff rather than the parents. Many teachers indicated in surveys that they were only comfortable working in the schools if the mask mandate remains in place, even though virtually all teachers are vaccinated, as are most students. Nationally, public school teachers unions have constituted a powerful interest group in favor of keeping students masked, and until recently, in favor of virtual school. Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, has previously stated that she wanted to see, quote, no transmission in schools at all, before she would support the removal of masks. 
D.C.'s public charter schools are generally not unionized, though Mundo Verde opted to join the American Federation of Teachers two years ago in the middle of the pandemic. In any case, it's disappointing that the somewhat differently structured gover this government that's differently structured at DCI, Yu Ying, and their cohort schools, well, it's not really produced better results from the standpoint of mask and distancing weary families. Quote, I've never even seen my son's kindergarten teacher in person, said Fraley. So, you know, I'm a big fan of charter schools, a school choice, setting up alternative educational systems for parents to experiment with and find the right school environment for their families. So the, these schools, these are DC charter schools that are governed by a, they have their own board that's mm -hmm. separate from DC public schools. And they are masking and doing COVID mitigation more aggressively than any than any system I can find anywhere in the United States. And the, par the parents are really frustrated. Well, what's interesting is that, so clearly charter schools are downstream from culture. Yeah. Like whether, whether they're independent or not. And certainly some parents are gonna be livid about this, but I wonder if there's a bigger cohort of parents who want that. Because charter schools depend on their ability to recruit people. A, pub a regular public school just get you know get students from the neighborhood uh, if too many kids from that neighborhood start going to charter schools that becomes a big problem and then there does become some competition for those kids but charter schools are all about recruiting kids to come to their schools and so they want parents to be happy mm -hmm. with their experience there and that's kind of the guiding principle behind them that they're going to perform better because they're you know incentivized to do so so are you finding that if charter schools are downstream of culture that some of the pro-masking culture is predominant there? Or like, why would they be in going up against DCPS, you know, running, running more conservative than them, and also angering their parents who are their customers? As far as I can tell, it is, it is the staff demanding this. Oh, interesting. And they are worried, it's staff retention. They are worried they will lose teachers. Uh, although, when I spoke to these parents, they were saying, they. they they think the school shouldn't take that concern very as seriously because where are they going to go? These teachers quit. Like the DC public school system is not requiring masks anymore. So you, at some point, right. if only these charter schools are are the are the mask well, right. play, like where else can they go? But they it, it's it's mostly to keep the the staff happy and the staff are demanding this. And, they, and their surveys they've done surveys with their staff members where the staff say they want a ridiculous level of compliance with all this COVID stuff before they're even comfortable. So in that way, it's just not very different from the traditional public school system, which has all throughout the pandemic was also beholden to not so much to its individual teachers, but to kind of the right. larger teachers union uh, leadership, which right. was very kind of monomaniacal about this. It's interesting that some of these charter schools are starting to unionize. Yeah, that yeah I saw business. that. Well, I looked Basically, at whether the whole, they were unionized, and yeah, yeah. Mundo Verde is, uh, is unionized. And I bet we'll continue to see more of that as... Yeah, probably. Uh, and the, biz that, like, the real business model for charter schools was like, we don't have a union. Right. <laughs> so we can, we, can pay, we can pay less, and we can work the teachers longer hours. Well, I, I mean, that, that's, certainly that's, a, that's what's said about charters. I, in some ways, I think they're set up to be more flexible or more right. Chinese language right there's more Spanish language and there's more version, like. in some ways there's more input from the staff the staff have more uh, there, there's more collaborative decision making they don't have the the guarantees of employment in certain mm -hmm. that 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 the that union offers in the traditional public school some can see that as a benefit they'd rather have flexibility they'd rather have more input even if that means less job security and less right. you know absolutely locked in pay rate that kind of stuff but, uh, but yeah, the, the pandemic has <laughs> scrambled this, a lot of people's approaches. Right, this is, this is one of those not like that situations where it's like, we're gonna, we're gonna empower <laughs> our staff right. to, really, to really guide our philosophy here. And they're like, cool, we're masking until the end of the year. It's like, oh, no, not like that. But I thought you'd appreciate it. Even though I'm an advocate of charter schools, I can criticize them if go. I don't like their policies. And if I think they're letting down some parents, which I really think they are. So. They should take a look at and this. What, what, was the, the, what was the line that would have the charters lose, Robbie? We have found yeah, it. We have found it. But so, that is insane. Like, they're still telling kids, they're still doing quarantines. Quarantine. If you travel if you to, out of if you, state. If you go to Hershey, Pennsylvania. It's, it's pretty nuts. Again, this is so far beyond what the CDC even recommends. That it, and they all said all along, that was part of the parents' frustration, because they said the school said all along, we're just going to do what the CDC right, says. Just we're the just going to do it. And they're like, 
okay, the CDC says we can pretty much go back to normal. It's like, no, they said, well, no, no. We're, we're still doing what the CDC said. What they said. We said said. We didn't say saying. <laughs> oh. Said. Anyway, Team Rising will join us next, so stick around.